Hi, I'm Kirsty, co-founder of Parlor Games. And today I'm going to do a quick walkthrough of my actual Comprehensive Plus saliva test report. And I'm here with Kate, our resident biochemistry nerd and also co-founder. Kate, what makes these reports so cool? What is different and what we like so much about this lab is that it's got reference ranges not only for women who aren't using hormones, but for women who are using hormones. So there's a wealth of information in there about how close your numbers are to optimal levels. So this is my actual report from the lab. And on this page, we're looking at the sex hormones I had tested. So when we look at this test report here, we list all the different hormones or analytes that we're testing. Next to that is the actual okay. result of the testing. And then there are three little categories, low WR, which stands for within range mm -hmm. and H for high. Now, next to that, we have the reference intervals. And these are drawn from thousands and thousands and thousands of data points to understand which are um, healthy ranges. I presume that as a postmenopausal woman, the reference range is going to show what's normal for a postmenopausal woman, which is going to be kind of down in the dirt, low. Um, and that the, the <laughs> supplementation the ranges then would be kind of uh, optimal for a postmenopausal woman. When someone fills out the requisition form, they have to put their date of birth in. They have to also put in the date of their last period. And the lab um, information system will take that and identify whether somebody is postmenopausal or premenopausal and populate the correct reference ranges. Okay, so you can see on mine that my sex hormones are within normal range compared to what's typical for postmenopausal women my age. But my DHEA is quite low compared to the reference range. Bummer. Now, over on the other side of the sheet, there is something called supplementation ranges. And so as we look at this particular example, we see that estradiol. Hmm, 1.2, which is about mid-range compared to the general reference range, but on the low end for the more optimal range for someone supplementing. I do supplement with vibrant third progesterone, and you can see that I'm way high compared to what's normal for my age, but I'm within the optimal supplementation range. So that's cool. And we're also looking to see what is the ratio between progesterone and estradiol, because those are the two hormones that do the power dance and we want them in balance. So my progesterone to estradiol ratio is well above the target level of 200, thanks to Vibrant Third. Interesting that the optimal supplementation for progesterone for my age is quite large. Now, a range is a range because everybody's different. And for one person who needs to be actually towards the top of a range, that could be too high for someone else. But that is also why one of the things that is collected when you do your testing is you write down any symptoms that you're experiencing. And then the test report has some general information on there that references the symptoms that you reported and the numbers that have been produced from the testing. And there's some general um, suggestions and guidelines. So it's a very comprehensive report. So the notes on my report indicate that my estriol level is within expected range for supplementation. Thanks, Silky Peach. Um, they have notes here about the estrogen quotient, which I find fascinating. It's a ratio of estriol, E3, which is cancer protective, to the proliferative estrogens, estrone and estradiol. So oftentimes estradiol is tested because it's the most powerful of the estrogens. Particularly for postmenopausal women, estrone is a hormone that becomes a little bit more important. And of course, you know, with our ladies who are using um, silky peach cream and the estriol, we definitely want to test their estriol levels to make sure that they're within range. But when it comes to women's health postmenopause, there's always keeping an eye to the potential for breast cancer development. Now, there are so many factors to include in the development of precancerous and then cancerous cells, only one of which is the potential presence of estrogen. And there are just so many other factors that are, are stronger risk factors. 
but we do want to keep an eye open for an estrone level that is too high because estrone, that hormone, can be metabolized into other forms of estrogen down the different pathways and increase the risk. So my EQ ratio here of 4.9 is comfortably above the optimal EQ for my age, which is nice. Let's turn to my adrenal report. Um, you can see they flip-flop the reference range and optimal range on this test. And you can see my cortisol levels throughout the day. First thing in the morning, they're slightly low compared to optimal. Noon is solid. Evening is slightly low. And night is on the low end of the optimal range. And again, my DHEA rather sucks. And the test measures cortisol at those four different times during the day. So we can plot individuals' curves against what the ideal curve should be. Now, what can happen is that this can all go to hell in a handbasket. Then you can also get patterns where, you know, it's low in the morning, it's low at lunchtime, it's low at dinner time, and it's low at bedtime. And this is what's often called a flat line because it is kind of like that. And this is someone whose adrenal glands where cortisol is produced, they have just got worn out. Okay, so here's my cortisol graph, fun times. So I'm not to the point of flatlining, but not great either. Because those patterns can vary so much, you know, everyone's curve is going to be slightly different. That's why it's kind of useful to take a look at it to see what's going on. This comment points out that I'm in phase two of adrenal gland dysfunction. That doesn't sound good. If your cortisol is flatlining or pretty close to that, there's also going to be some lifestyle factors. Yes, a practitioner could help you with the right kind of supplements that suit you and your needs. However, that kind of dysregulation did not happen overnight. And so it can take a while to unwind some of that. And it's usually going to involve having a kind and gentle and supportive conversation with yourself about, well, how can I dial down the stress in my life? So you're saying as a business owner, I'm doomed? Yes. But seriously, I hope you can see how valuable this report can be in guiding your decision-making around your health and your menopause. Cheers.